Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Bookshark curriculum. I am going to be sharing some tips and some advice and some honest feedback about using Bookshark's curriculum, especially those of you that may have never used a curriculum structured like Bookshark. Um, there is some adjusting that you need to do. Alright guys, so those of you that are new, my name is Ashley. I'm a homeschooling mom to three kids. I have a fourth grader, a second grader, and a preschooler. This year we decided to start using Bookshark's Reading with History curriculum for my fourth grader. It is level D, which is the first year of their American history. Um, the age range, I believe they recommend is eight to 12, maybe eight to 11. I'll put it somewhere down here um, when I can look at their website. So we have been um, researching it and somewhat using Bookshark here and there, but this school year is when we fully decided we're going to do their recommended instructor's guide four days a week, all the books, all the read alouds. Um, and so once I did that, I was kind of thrown off guard because I was not prepared. I'll give you guys a little bit of background. We were using like we were doing family style history curriculum and so previously we had done the good and the beautiful's history year one which is more world history as a family. That didn't work out so great um, so I was kind of seeing maybe we need to do it more independent start with American history. So what is, if you've never used Bookshark and you don't really understand how it's set up it's a literature base so you are reading books to learn the curriculum the curriculum there's like core books there's um fiction and non-fiction type books and then you get this instructor's guide this was my favorite thing because i'm a busy working homeschooling mom of multiple kids for them to plan out the schedule was just amazing however that's also the biggest downside now that i'm actually using it so they plan out four days they tell you okay these are like the core books you need to read these are the read alouds these are the independent readers and these are the activities so the first thing that i will say there, there's a lot of reading, obviously. It's a literature-based curriculum. So those of you who are like, yeah, Ashley, that's what you bought. You bought a literature-based curriculum. Well, to transition from maybe doing one read aloud a week, kind of switching between a read aloud or independent reader, to really going into about three to four different books at a time um, was a huge transition for myself and for my older daughter. And we're now we're talking, I'm only doing this with my fourth grader. Um, so having to manage all of that plus i still have two other kids that i need to think about reading with right they're they're not going to listen to these read alouds so my first struggle was all of the reading and fitting it in um what i learned and this is my number one tip is start getting comfortable with audiobooks audiobooks are a game changer now i tried audiobooks in the past and i didn't like them my kids didn't like them but we tried them again um, and the example I have is why they worked so well is one of our first read alouds was about Native Americans and their tribe names, their names, they're hard to pronounce even for me and I looked up how to pronounce a lot of them. So when I'm trying to read aloud to my daughter and she's trying to comprehend a topic that she hasn't understood before, um, that is not a smooth reading experience, right? Because I'm more focused on making sure I'm pronouncing these tribes names right. Um, and then the Indian names, they're not common names. And so for my fourth grader, I think someone's name was Cloud Forming. Well, whenever I said Cloud Forming, she was not grasping that that was someone's name. So when we switched to the audiobook and the narration, they did a thousand times better job than I did. And she was actually at that point able to just listen to the story and understand better. And then if she had questions, I could obviously help. And so sometimes in history, these names, these places, pronunciations, the narration in audiobooks is going to be a lifesaver for you, 
and be able to help your kids understand more. So that was the first thing is switching those read alouds to audio narration just worked so much better. Then she could listen to those audiobooks, those read alouds while she was doing one of her other assignments. She's the type of kid that can be listening to something and working on something else. She listens to music 90% of the time while she's doing work. So she actually started listening to her audiobook while she was doing her cursive handwriting. And so then she was actually able to work on two things at once, which was also a huge um, tip that I will share to you because each day with Bookshark took us between 45 minutes to an hour and a half because there's so much to go through. And there's a lot of, you know, slowing down, checking for understanding because it is history. It's not the easiest engaging topic for kids. If you guys want more information on how we use audiobooks, like actually what systems we used, how we figured it all out, um, I can do a whole video on it because I was so lost with audiobooks in the beginning, how to pay for them, what it all meant. So if you guys want more information on audiobooks, let me know down below and I will make a video specifically on that. So besides audiobooks, um, we, there's also core books. And so they use the American history visual encyclopedia i think by dk which is a really cool reference book um but there's like a lot of information and then there's like all these like little tidbits right it's like we're talking about native americans what has like all these art and culture and then we were also reading another book about native americans like a separate book the thing i was struggling with is because there's such reference type books we were having a really hard time just comprehending basic understanding like this is what happened because there was such an influx of information, you know, resource books, they give it to you all. We really were having a hard time. Like we just needed to focus. Like what are we supposed to be learning <laughs> this week? Like what is what are we supposed to be accomplishing? So where we're struggling with Bookshark is there's just an overload of information. There's that nonfiction text and multiple versions of it. And then there's the fictional stories that kind of tie into it, but not exactly at the same time. It all does come together after we're weeks in. It all is tying together and it does all go together. But if you're using this as someone's first experience to American history, and maybe you're a parent like me that doesn't have that grade of knowledge, I'm not a historian. I did not do well in those classes in high school. Um, we are, we were, were missing a structured almost textbook like what is this date when did this happen um it's almost like there's just too much information and we kind of just need to narrow it down so with that what we started doing is i just myself kind of just said okay we're gonna learn about this topic and we're gonna kind of ease up on some of the stuff maybe we're not gonna read three course books today we're gonna read one we're really gonna focus on it and that's it so then that brings me to my next point is this schedule because it sits there and tells you you have to do these four days every single week we were not used to doing history every single school day we did it maybe once to twice per week so to go from doing it a small amount to every single school day for a major part of our day this actually was the longest subject my daughter was spending time on math was second math takes her about 45 minutes she was spending a solid hour to hour and a half on history. Now, reading is also in there, so she wasn't doing any additional reading, so that was obviously fine, but that is a huge transition that I think if you're switching to Bookshark and you've never done something like that before, you have to understand you're going for, to a very large commitment of history. Um, so with all of that being said, we have stopped really using and following the four days a week it's just it's not going to work for us that's too much history it was too much to wear it was almost like gosh we were enjoying it my daughter was engaged she's loved every book that we've read the books that they've picked are fantastic but just knowing how long it's going to take us to get through that day was almost like a deterrent like Whoa, we don't really want to do it today so where we're at today is um my daughter's doing the read along not my daughter's doing the independent readers so the i think there's like 20 books that she's been assigned to read she is still reading those um and and she loves them she really enjoys those books 
but we are not sticking to that schedule like we were before. So um, what we've decided to do is we have kind of decided to just take a pause with Bookshark. Um, obviously we're still using the independent readers which is a huge part of what bookshark is so if you just need some readers for your book i highly or for your child not for your book i highly recommend the readers for the bookshark levels they are it's they plan them out for you you have discussion questions so i like those but as far as the instructor's guide and following that that is what we're kind of taking a step back on here's some thoughts that i have I think my fourth grader needs a more to the point history understanding before we can get into this literature based. That's just what I think. I think she needs to have a general understanding. When was America founded? What happened there? What was next? I think she needs to know that before we can really jump into these um, encyclopedia guides and kind of just on your own discovery so that is my opinion it, I could be wrong we could get into those types of things and it could just be the worst um, so what I'm thinking is we're going to kind of pivot to a more to the point structured history type curriculum um, for my fourth grader that she'll do independently then my second grader when she goes into third grade will kind of follow and do that same thing and then what I'm thinking is when I have maybe if when my second grader is in fourth grade, so in two more years, and then my fourth grader will be in sixth grade, um, I think I'm going to bring this this actual book shark unit back and follow it as it is because then they're both going to be older. They're both going to be able to handle more of that course load work and then we can do it together. So then I'm not stretch very thin then they both have a better understanding of american history because they've taken those to the point beginner type courses and then we can really discuss do those read alouds together all of that so it's not saying that i don't like bookshark and we're not using it i just think the way that it's intended to use is not working for us this year so my advice is don't give up on it. The book recommendations are great. There's tons of great information, but one, try to do it with multiple kids if, if, you, if you can. That's going to save you so much teaching time because there is a lot. And really make sure your kids understand because it's gonna go way over their head if you never talked about this stuff. Um, and so I honestly don't know how much history, be, uh, American history my daughter was taught in public school. I just know that we talked about world history. And so this is new to her. And I think we just need to take a step back and redo that before we get into this type of curriculum. So we are pausing on the whole bookshark literature guide, teachers, instructors guide four days a week for 36 weeks. I'm going to reintroduce that, um, I believe, when I have a older elementary and a middle schooler and we can combine it and do it together. Then we'll do year one and year two of history um, when they're older and we can do it together. So that is my advice. Um, don't feel boxed in. Use it how it works in your homeschool. The literature is absolutely amazing so the books that they recommend are fabulous choices we are continuing to use those independent readers this year um, and so you'll hear me talking about those in future readings and then um, i will be sharing more about what history curriculum i choose to use to get my girls on a good path where this would work for us in the future if you have more questions about Bookshark, um, I'm still using their science curriculum. I will have a bunch more videos on that because that I absolutely love. We do that together as a family and that is just perfect. Um, but if you have other questions about history or if you need some advice how to work it in your homeschool, leave it down below in the comments. I would love to help you guys out. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and we will chat soon. Bye guys. Bye.